first secret I want to share with you is one that I love to teach to my new students because it's something that can drastically change your sound and make it easier to play the saxophone. It's exciting because it's something I can fix in the very first lesson and it only takes a few minor adjustments. What we're going to need to do is first we're going to change your lip position, your tongue position, and the focus of the airstream. It's not only going to give you a bigger, more beautiful sound, it's going to make the saxophone easier to play, you're going to be able to play those screaming high notes easier, and it's going to give you the ability to play more soulfully. Now, the most important thing about developing a dynamic sound is knowing that you need as much airflow as possible, and that's important with any wind instrument. First, I'm going to start off teaching you the incorrect way so we can compare it to the new way that I'm going to show you. In the incorrect way, which I'm going to call from now on the old way, you are taught to put your lip over your bottom teeth like this. Most of us have been taught that way and the problems with that is number one, that sets up an air resistance which I'm going to demonstrate to you. Number two is by putting our lips around the reed, what happens is if this is the reed and I put my lips around it and I'm pushing in, there I'm also stifling the sides of that reed. So what we want to do instead is to have our lips parallel to the reed. And the third thing is by setting up that kind of resistance, when we're trying to push harder to get that you know, that dynamic sound, that, that passion in our sound, we actually get less. Now let me show you the new embouchure. What we're going to do is start with the old embouchure, our lip over our teeth, but we're going to roll it out so that only the back wet part of our lip is covering the teeth. Like this. Let me show you a close-up of it. actually pulling my lip out from and more of the lip is going to go down further on the reed so you're actually covering more of the reed you're opening up this little channel so that the air can get in there let's listen to the airstream again here's the old way my lips over my teeth the new way It's, it's a huge amount of air difference. And with that airflow, your sound is going to get bigger. Now, with that new amount of air, we're going to have to figure out what to do with that air so our sound doesn't get honky. Because that's the first thing you're going to notice. If you don't have your tongue in a higher tongue position, then your sound is going to sound kind of honky, like... <laughs> Gonna have that kind of sound. The more air you put through it, but without the speed in the air, it's gonna sound honky. So what we do to be able to speed up the air is we think of how we blow hot and cold air. This is the best way to actually demonstrate where your tongue should be in your mouth. Let's put our hand in front of our face and blow hot air shouldn't be able to feel anything because hot air means that we have a very large channel and it's moving through it, it has no speed in it. But when we put our hand out and we blow cold air, what happens? Immediately we feel the speed of that air because if you do it again, you'll notice that your tongue is elevated in your mouth creating a smaller channel for it to go through and so it goes through like a bullet. And when our air is going too fast, now we've focused the airstream. And instead of sounding honky, now we can get the focus that we're looking for as well as that fatness in the sound. And it's really as simple as that. But it takes a little bit of practice to get it. So I'm going to give you some exercises now that can help you to develop it. 
One of the best exercises I know for practicing this new embouchure and getting a big sound is to practice listening to your airstream. So what we're going to do is finger low G and with the new embouchure just blow air. Don't let the sound come. You should hear the air flowing through freely without any resistance. If you're hearing resistance like the old way, then you're doing it wrong and you need to go back to that part of the video and relearn how to get that lip out and create that tray which is going to free up the air. Once you've got that, you should hear it a 30 to 50 percent difference in the new way versus the old way. And by practicing this on everything that you play, like practice this the very first thing and then when you start playing a tune, the very first note of that tune, just check it. Am I, am I blowing that? And then what we would need to do is when we actually want to play the note, we're just going to speed the air up. So this is how it works. I play the low G, I get the air going, then I push a little bit harder with my diaphragm and the note's going to pop out. I'm not even sure exactly when it's going to pop out. Okay, so this is what you should be practicing and listening to how that affects the amount of sound you get. Try different pressures of your lip. Listen to the sound, sound of the airstream and then listen to the sound of the note. The more you can, you know, experiment and discover how that really affects your sound, the better you're going to sound. The second exercise will help you to focus your sound. We were talking about how we're going to use a lot more air so it has to have a lot more speed. So what I want you to do is think that you have a straw starting in your mouth and going through the entire instrument out the belt and 10 feet out in front of you and that you're trying to blow it all the way out the other end. If you, if you practice that, that's going to feel a lot different than the way you're playing right now. Just try that right now and see if there's not a difference in the way it feels to blow that air out there. And what that's going to do is it forces you to focus the air. Because remember I said cold air was f fast bullet stream air. And this is what's going to help you do that. Especially thinking all the way out in front of you, 10 feet. That's going to help really focus the air stream. So practice that as a separate exercise and then try to incorporate that with the new embouchure. In this third exercise, I really like it for opening up my sound, making it more resonant and fuller. How it works is it's kind of like having a teacher to be a model and you, he's playing a note and telling you to match the sound of my sound with yours. So how this works is you're going to play middle D with the octave key on and watch what happens when I add my high D side key. Watch. You can hear that immediately. It's almost like I took a blanket off the bell of my horn. It suddenly got bigger, fuller, more vibrant, you know. So listen to it again. So it's not only louder, but it's more vibrant. There's a more resonance in the sound, okay? So what I want to do is use that as my model. I'm going to start with that sound, then I'm going to take it off, and I'm going to try to do things inside here to open up and match that sound. Now if I do that for like a few minutes, eventually my sound is going to be, you're not going to be able to tell with it on or off. And that is the best way to get started to developing your sound and getting that very fat sound that you can get out of this horn if you really work it like this. Now in the future I'm going to have other exercises with overtones and different kinds of uh, techniques and also to get it, our tongue involved and how to tongue these exercises are all going to improve your sound.